Hi, everybody. My name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. It is a first day. It is the day of the sun, Sol Victus. It is the day that all of the 41,000 different religions, they all go to a church that's not ordained in scriptures. They go to a, a uh, well, so the Catholics go to a mass. They go to a mass and... Uh, Sometimes they go to a black mass. I don't know. But, uh, you know, here we are. So we are not these people. We are not the people of the world. Who are we, boys? What do we believe? We believe the laws that commands for all generations. We believe that Messiah Yehoshua did not die so that we could get rid of the Torah, put away the Torah. Paul didn't put away the Torah, and then the disciples did away the Torah. The Torah is still in effect. Who is Messiah Yehoshua, as you say? That is Jesus. People know him as Jesus the Christ, but we know him as Yehoshua because there's no J's in Hebrew. So you say Yehoshua, I say Yahushua, people say Yeshua. Um, they're very, they're much closer than the word Jesus, right? And right. so I mean that's a, I believe Yeshua is a is a basically a short name of Yahushua, Yahushua. And so uh, Jade always puts an O A at the end of his um, for some reason, but um, very much closer than Jesus Christ. Now we believe the laws, statutes, and commands are all good for all generations. Now what? was the purpose of Yahushua, Jesus the Christ's uh, death and, and resurrection. Eli? It was to do away with the animal sacrifices, so we didn't have to be, keep sacrificing animals every time we sinned because he was our sacrifice lamb. So that was his entire purpose? Yeah. And, so we no. saved the animals? No. It... <laughs> we saved the animals. All right. Well, Messiah came to die and we saved the animals. He also it, made it, all food entire, play, his according entire to purpose Christians. was to shine yeah. light to men. And it was to show us how to live the Torah, how to walk the Torah. It was also to give us a freedom from the curse of death, right? From the curse of breaking uh, the Torah. So that, because he did not like animal sacrifices. Yahushua said it. His prophets have said it. He said, I do not want sacrifice. I want obedience. But that was neither that, neither that was happening. So That's a hard concept, isn't it? Uh, obedience versus sacrifice. It seems like something that um, it's all over. It's the theme of the scriptures from the very beginning to the very end. Even in the book of Revelations, it talks about um, obedience. And this is um, this is what we believe. And so here we are, uh, gentlemen. We are into the book of... Actually, we'll go over this real quick. Let me... This is Josh Scriptures. For anybody that doesn't know, this is Josh Scriptures. Uh, it is available. It is on a train. Where's the train at, Mr. Cole? Tennessee, the train of scriptures, thousands of scriptures are in Tennessee right now on the way. Um, they they should be there very, very soon. So this week, um, the second they're there, uh, the Bible distribution company, they will be spitting them out and everybody will be getting these down there. Um, these are available right now. And if you guys would like to get them, that you can um, get your order in. For every scriptures that is ordered, we are able to give one full scriptures into our brothers and sisters in chains. If you guys know of folks inside of prisons that are, would be receptive to number one, the scriptures, number two, having us hang out with them because we just don't send a scriptures out because they just don't go into prisons. So what we do is if you guys can give us a name, we will go hunt up your loved one or your friend or whoever it is, and we will send them an email in the prison email system and figure out exactly how to get them a scriptures because a lot of times it's, it's harder to get scriptures to these guys than... Um, people have, they have an address, but they, it just doesn't get to where they need to go. And so sometimes we have to contact the chaplains of these prisons to make sure that we can get the scriptures in there. And so there's a system and a setup that we are doing. So if you guys have brothers or sisters in chains, let us know their names. We will try to get a hold of them and get them a scriptures. And, um, so let's continue on. This is, uh, these are our prophets of Yisrael. And this is where, this is what we're talking about in Kings right now. We're in the Second Kings, and once we're done with Second Kings, um, it's pretty much well. You were heading into the the prophets, and beyond the prophets, everybody goes into captivity, and so during the prophets, everybody everybody's heading into the captivity side. But as far as the kings of Israel, these are um, we don't hear any other side of these in, until we get into the Chronicles, and then it kind of gives us like a, a basically a recap of all of this stuff as well. But this is the um, world of Israel. You had two different kingdoms. You had the northern kingdom and you had the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was was comprised of Benjamin and also Judah. And the northern kingdom was comprised of all of the other other tribes. Now, these tribes never got along. They, they During their reign, they were always at war with each other. Like the, It's like the, the Hatfields and McCoys. They, they completely hate each other. Um, 
and they're all trying to survive all of the other onslaughts of all the other countries that are always trying to take each or both or um, everyone around them. And so here we are. Uh, gentlemen, can you guys give me a quick recap of where we're at in Kings? Jade, do you remember? Does anyone remember? It's been a while since we've done this, the Kings, this particular series. Uh, they killed the sons of Acab. Uh, they killed Jezebel. One guy wrote a um, little letter. All the people told him to come meet up to see his next king. and killed them all. And uh, then they got another guy who took over. And uh, he didn't completely stop the ways of Yarobam, but he, uh, he didn't follow Torah, but he did kill the evil people. But uh, he still didn't follow Torah. And uh, they all went astray again, and they're back to um, going astray. Yeah, and so if you guys can see here on the timeline, this is kind of the timeline we're looking at. Um, Jehu, Jeho, Az, and Jeho, Ash. These are the, the kings in, that we're, we're dealing with right here in this time. So, all right, let us begin. And I saw a message from Irma. She wants to know if she can get that in a PDF. Get what in the PDF? The timeline of the kings. Oh, it is a PDF. Yeah, this is a PDF. Yeah, we'll, uh, do you have her email? I think so. If she has her email, yeah, it's just a PDF. This is just a PDF as it is. Or maybe it's an image. Maybe it's an image. Does she need a PDF or image? I don't know. Um, but we'll get it over to you. Yeah, we have, the, we have this and you guys can, if anybody wants this, send us an email, jboss008 at gmail.com and let us know what you're after. And we'll be happy to send it on your way. Okay, here we go. And Athel Yahoo was the mother of Akiz Yahoo. And when she saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the offspring of the rain. What do you guys think that looks like? I guess this is the Athala Yahoo. So this is, a, do you th is this woman, is she a wild woman? I yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, you guys say you gotta be pretty crazy to uh, wipe out the entire generation. Oh, uh, yeah, you'd have to be, old, you'd have pretty, got some Jezebel in you, huh? Okay, but Yahoo Sheba, the daughter of the sovereign of Yoram, sister of Akiz Yahoo, took Yoash, son of Akiz Yahoo, and stole him away from among the sons of the sovereign's, sovereign's sons who were put to death. So they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom. From Athel Yahoo, and he was not put to death. Um, this is interesting, right? This is one of these uh, very interesting things here um, that we have uh, a single child of all of these sovereigns that is able to be hidden away because you know this. People talk in these kingdoms, right? If you if you take some kid away and you have to provide for them and do these things. Everybody's going to be talking. So this feat that these guys were all able to pull off is, is pretty amazing. Okay, three. And he remained with her in hiding in the house of Yahuwah for six years while Atha Yahu was reigning over the land. And in the seventh year, Yahu Yada sent and brought the commanders of the hundreds with the Karaites and the runners and brought them into the house of Yahuwah to him. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. My throat is jacked. And he made a covenant with them and took an oath from them in the house of Yahuwah and showed them the son of the sovereign. And he commanded them, saying, This is what you are to do. One third of you who come in on the Shabbat are to be on guard in the sovereign's house. And one third at the gate of Sir. And one third at the gate behind the runners. And you shall be on guard in the house, lest it be broken down. This is interesting. It starts on Shabbat, right? Um... Why do you think it started on Shabbat? Why didn't it start on the day afterwards or something? But, I mean, it would have been the same thing, right? They would have had to have the guards there to take care of this kid. Yeah. Um, anyone? Thoughts on Shabbat I starters? Don't know. Maybe that's because, like, maybe this is a, we're getting a restart, you know, then after the next day it's going to be a new week, so maybe, like, fresh know. start. I don't know. I don't know. And the two detachments of you who are going out on the Shabbat shall be on guard in the house of the sovereign, for, house of Yahuwah for the sovereign. And you shall surround the sovereign on all sides. Every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes within the ranks, let him be put to death and be with the sovereign as he goes out and as he comes in. So I'm guessing there aren't um, arrow snipers around here. Because, um, I mean, this would this would not stop some dude driving an arrow from above or some dude that got into, like, the guard tower and was able to, to do this. Nobody should go with a bow here. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, was that an eight? You were on nine. Nine, nine. So the commanders of the hundreds did according to all that Yahu Yada, the Kohen, commanded. And each of them took his men who were going in on the Shabbat with those who were going out on the Shabbat and came to Yahu Yada, the Kohen. And the Kohen gave the commanders of hundreds the spears and shields which had belonged to Sovereign Dawid that were in the house of Yahuwah. And the runner stood, every man with his weapon in his hand, all around the Sovereign from the right side of the house to the left side of the house by the altar and the house. And he brought out the son of the sovereign and put him on the, 
put on him the diadem and the witness. And they appointed him to reign and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, let the sovereign live. And Athel Yahu heard the noise of the runners, the people. And she came to the people into the house of Yahuwah and looked and saw the sovereign standing by a column according to the ruling. And the chiefs and the trumpeters were beside the sovereign. And all the people of the land rejoiced in blowing trumpets. And Athel Yahu tore her garments and cried out, treason, treason. All right, what do you guys make of the runners? What do you, what do you guys, what, what are you? I mean, I think they're actual runners. Like, they're like actual, actual people, you guys like think? Like, maybe like messengers, like people that like deliver messages. So these guys are all in their track outfit with their little headbands on, and they have their scrolls, and the king's all ready to roll. Yeah, maybe they run to all parts of Judah. Right? And then they, uh, how do they how do they fire a gun? They can't fire a gun to get these guys running. I assume they uh, uh, ram's horn or something. Ram's horn, blow the shofar. Yeah, and, and so we have all the runners, and they just start blasting off to, all, to everywhere and let everyone know that this is now the new king. Yeah. All right. I, mean, I don't know about the whole track outfit and the headband thing. Hey, but. they're the runners, man. They're they're obviously runners. So I mean, they're they're probably not in their uh, their kilts. They're probably not in uh, their mumus. They're probably I don't know if they had, some, like pants either. I don't know. You know, or they, shorts. You don't think they had sh- pants or shorts back then? Pants. I don't know. You don't think? It's hard to trousers at some points. And knickers. I think everybody has some knickers, right? Something. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Somebody should look that up. When did they invent pants? I'm sure pants were invented back in these days. <clears throat> Let's continue on. Uh, and Yohi, Yaho Yada, the Kohen commanded the commanders of the hundreds, the officers of the army, and said to them, Take her outside the ranks and slay her, slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the Kohen has said, Do not let her be killed in the house of Yahuwah. All right. Um, do, you, do you think anyone followed her at this point? I doubt it. You let her go out? Do you think she went out by herself or do you think they had to grab her? Oh, no, I'm pretty sure they had to like, escort her out. Is she, uh, did she walk with them with dignity, or she was she flailing? And, yeah, and she, she wasn't holding still. She, she wasn't holding still? She wasn't walking to her doom? No. Okay, 16. So they took hold of her, and she went by the way of the horse's entrance to the sovereign's house and was put to death there. And Yahuwah made a covenant between Yahuwah and the sovereign and the people to be the people of Yahuwah. Also, between the sovereign and the people. You think they stoned her, or you think they cut her up? I think Stoner, I think with the right way. But. <clears throat> all right. 18. And all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and broke it down. They completely broke up his altars and images and slew Matin, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the Kohenin appointed inspectors over the house of Yahuwah and took the commanders of hundreds and the Karaites and the runners and all the people of the land. And they brought the sovereign down from the house of Yahuwah and went by the way of the gate of the runners to the sovereign's house. And he sat on the throne of the sovereign's. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city had rest, for they had slain Athel Yahu with the sword in the sovereign's house. Yahuash was seven years old when he began to reign. All right. It's pretty young. I think this youngest king, right? Um, I think seven. I think they've done it, been kings of seven before, haven't they? they this is the one. This is the guy? Okay. So, yeah, he uh, is a, uh, he's young. So. You think he knew what he was doing? <clears throat> Absolutely not. I don't think you'd know what you're doing until you're about 55. So when you're 55, then you actually might have life together. But until then, it's, every day is a learning curve, and there's no way you're going to be an effective leader at seven. But these guys, this kid had all of these yeah, people around yeah, him. Out of the priest. He's yeah, really old. He has point. mama somewhere, whoever it was that like hid him away. Um, you know, he's going to be. He's going to have counselors. He's going to have all these things. Um, you know, because at seven, you're still you're still a child, man. 55, you're still a child, especially if you're a man. Some men never grow up. Anyway, that's. Why are you looking at me? Huh? Why are you looking at me? Why are you smiling at me? The oldest known trousers yeah. was between 13 and 10 BC. 13, 10 BC. Wow. They may have not had knickers back then. Because we're, uh, wow, well, maybe. I said they were mainly made for horseback riding. Yeah, or the, that would maybe be, the runners. That would make sense. Yeah. You, you wouldn't want your kilt on there. All right. Well, here we go, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys very, very much. Much love to all of you guys. We love you. We're out. All right. Shalom. Shalom.